Okay, so welcome to this should be the last video on the virtual lab and I just want to recap where we are. We just finished trial one of part one. You know, you have to do that three more, uh, two more times. Um, and so what we have right now is we have the um, the endpoint was reached and we know because we got this light pink color solution and um, I went ahead and filled out the information in the table, like everything that I should have calculated. I didn't put down the actual molarity because um, you need to calculate that on your own. So I'm gonna put an X here. I'm not gonna tell you what that number is or if this is even the right number. Maybe it's 0.5, maybe it's whatever. But anyway, um, you'll have to figure out how to calculate the molarity from the volume of NaOH and um, knowing the moles of NaOH is the same as the um, moles of KHP okay all right so anyway you get that information you'll do that a couple more times we're now going to move on to part two for part two uh, the procedure is going to uh, look like this so let's say we determine what we know what our molarity is it's um, uh, point um, 101 molar in OH that's what we that's what part one was for to figure out the molarity for part two, the setup will look very similar, except for um, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and remove this because I don't need that anymore. This setup is going to look very similar, um, except for what I'm going to titrate this with is a 0.1 molar HCl solution. So I just click on that, and that gives that to me. I go back to the stock room. I'm going to add my phenolphthalein to that. Okay, and again, we're going to add about 0.5 milliliters. I'll just go ahead and pour that in. All right, close that down. And again, I'm going to make sure the box is highlighted when you're removing something. It's a little hard to see, but if you don't, it will remove the thing you don't want. So make sure the box is highlighted. All right. So for part two, that's the um, first thing that I want to do is um, I have my 100 milliliter HCl solution. All I had to do was actually grab that from the stock room. Now it says refill the burette if necessary. So um, right now, if you notice the burette, it was at 22 or something like that. We're gonna go ahead and grab, make sure it's the NaOH solution. Don't screw that up, because that really must be your lab. I'm gonna pour some more in here. It's at 25, I used about 20-ish or something like that. So I'm gonna say 21.18, I'm gonna be a little fancier. Okay, that's how much I'm adding. If it's gonna overflow, it will let you know. Okay, so right now I can get my initial burette reading. That's 3.5, this is 3.6, so I would say it's about 3.61. Um, as my initial burette reading um, at this for trial one. Okay, and I'm gonna titrate that um, the NaOH and this HCl. So I know I now know the concentration of NaOH, but I don't know the concentration of HCl. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, remove my NaOH because I have I'm done with that. Okay, so I can get started, but just as before, what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate the same calculations that we did before. We're gonna calculate uh, approximately how much we would need for the one molar solution um, for me to pour in about 80% of the one molar solution. And then I would go ahead and add that to the um, HCl. So we can go ahead and do very similar calculations that we did here, except for Okay, so um, in order to figure out the, how much uh, NaOH I need to get to to add 80% of the amount for the equivalent point, this is what my work, work would look like. So the same thing that we did before, except for in this case, um, since we didn't weigh out a solid here, we just have a solution. We're going to use the 0.1 molarity and multiply it by its volume. And the volume is written here at the bottom. You can see 100.50 milliliters, which um, if I divide that number by a thousand will give me the volume in liters. So I can multiply that the molarity and the volume in liters and get the moles of HCl. And that's what I did over here. So this is the volume in liters, this is the approximate molarity, and that gives me the number of moles of HCl. According to my balanced chemical equation, then that is the number of moles of NaOH. Once I have the number of moles of NaOH, I can go ahead and um, divide that by the molarity. Remember, I got the molarity of NaOH from part one, and I'm not gonna give you the value that I have. So I'm just gonna put 1.0x, because I'm not giving the full value that I have, since you need to do those calculations on your own. 
Anyway, so I have the molarity here. And then that will help me get the volume in liters, convert that to milliliters. And then once I have the volume in milliliters, I can go ahead and move on to um, getting 80% of the volume. So this is the volume that I would need in total. I only want 80% of this. because I'm just going to pour that straight in uh, to the flask from the burette. So um, this value should be... So I take the 10.05 milliliters, multiply it to get 80% of that, and multiply it by 0.8, and that gives me this volume in milliliters. And then after that, um, I can also just estimate what would the burette reading be after I add the, that 80% of NOH, which is the initial volume plus the um, volume that I want to add, and that will give me, it should be around at the 11.65 mark. So let's go ahead and just do that. Um, remember to add 80% of the... Um, Volume, I need to add about 8.5 milliliters, so that's what I'm going to add straight away. And I don't have to worry about overshooting the endpoint when it's just 80%. So I, under precise, I add 8.5. And that does give me to, um, uh, my calculations may have been a little bit off because this is saying like 12 point something. So at any rate, um, I have the volume here. I see that the pH is still acidic, so now I can go ahead and start adding 0 0.05 milliliters at a time. Okay, and then I can stop here, and then that tells me that the volume that I have here is 12.5, um, between 0.5 and 0.6, so 12.58, I would say, um, milliliters. So going back to my document here, 12.58. Okay, now we can um, fill out the rest of this for our first trial. So I'm going to pause that and do that. Okay, so this is sort of what my math would look like. Um, and I would get the molarity of HDL after doing my calculations. You're going to do that again two more times. Now, I just want to take a moment to note here that I think I made some reading errors when I was reading the burette, and this is the reason why we're doing trials, um, because I think that the initial burette reading that I recorded must have been off, because when I added the 80%, um, the 8.50 milliliters, it wasn't the amount that I expected. So I think that my reading was off. I probably didn't read the burette correctly. Remember, as you're reading, the numbers increase. Um, at any rate, so because of that error, it's going to actually, sh it can show up in my work. It will show up in my work. Um, and that's actually a good thing. I'm actually glad I made that mistake so that you can see that when you're doing subsequent trials, that's part of the purpose. Just to note, if your very first trial is completely off, because maybe, or any trial is completely off, you can go ahead and remove that from your calculations and average it using the ones that are really close together. Okay, finally, um, I just want to recap some of the key things for this lab. Um, Make sure that when you're pouring the glassware, um, so when you're adding something to your glassware, you drag the thing on top. Add things precisely. Don't use the um, realistic. If your workbench gets full, delete things you don't need. Make sure you to hit the bottom, um, to hit the 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 bottom to re to remove. Um, the bottom remove. I mean, so don't hit remove solids. Hit the where it says remove not remove solids, not remove liquids, because if you do that, you'll have to start all over again. And finally, in the burette reading, you have two decimal places. Everyone's gonna do their own lab, and then you're gonna submit your lab in um, a document that's online. Sorry, you're gonna submit your lab, the paper version of your lab with your work written on it to me next class. For the last part here, um, you'll notice that it has a section where you're supposed to check your um, concentration. At the very bottom here, you're going to go ahead and check it. And what you'll do is, um, this is after it's correct, so I'm going to put in a value that's probably going to be wrong. Um, 0 0.0897 molars. Um, and they're telling me I should have two significant, four significant figures, so I'm going to add a, another sig fig because it's telling me four. And I'm going to hit check. And then, okay. You are wrong, but you still have one attempt left. So what they're telling me is I have one more chance to try this. So you need to take a screenshot of what you get after you do your three attempts. If you get it right eventually, great. Um, you'll get 
points for accuracy. Um, you won't lose all the points for the lab, by the way. You just will get points, your points for accuracy, which are about five points. Um, but if you don't get it, if you do not get it correct, show this anyway so I know that you did your own. Okay, so you'll just take a screenshot of that and then you'll start it into the, um, the document um, here where you just take, go ahead and copy and paste the image. All right, um, good luck with the lab and sorry I couldn't be there. I will be there on Friday, so if you wanna check in with me um, at lunch, you can. Uh, good luck all. All right, have a quality day.